everyone, this is a review of the Teas CC3, or the T Eyes. If I said it too fast, there's a built-in um, digital assistant that is voice activated, so I don't want to activate it. Um, this is a Android tablet stereo. Pretty cool. Ton of great features. Um, so this is your main homepage. So you have your audio, your picture-in-picture, picture, quick links for different applications. You can scroll through and pick one that you want to have on here. I just have these for now, and then your radio. For the picture-in-picture picture window, you can customize what you want. So I have a 360 camera setup that I'll get into in just a moment. I have a DVR, which is basically a dash cam. That's right there. Um, I can take pictures, obviously record video of my drives. This uh, I'm not super into, it's kind of a gimmick, I'll let that load here a second. Um, this is your Google Maps, of course, so you can have a picture-in-picture -picture window of your map. Now we have this loaded. This is essentially a driving virtualizer that will uh, mimic, so it'll, it'll show you your speed and it's basically like a, a display of how fast you're going and it has graphics and stuff. I'm not super into that, so I will leave it back on my go-to. Um, so, like I said, it is an Android tablet, so you have access to download apps from the Google Play Store, so anything you can get on an Android phone or tablet, you can get on here. So I have all my streaming apps, YouTube, Netflix, HBO, Hulu, Paramount, Discovery, Disney, I don't have Disney on here right now, but uh, I could download it if I wanted to. Um, so that's great, you know, it's really, it really is an Android tablet, so that's super cool. Um, I do have to have a hotspot connected to it, which uh, my phone that I'm recording from now serves as that. It is not connected right now, but it's very easy to do that. I just go into the settings. Uh, I don't have my hotspot on at the moment, but it would show up here. So that's cool. Um, another super cool feature of this that I've never really seen in an aftermarket stereo is that you could have support for a um, SIM card. So that icon, of course, I don't have one in here, but you could put a SIM card in here, which is super cool. I've never really heard that. So it acts, if you had a SIM card in here, it would act as its own data connection. So you wouldn't need to connect a, a hotspot from your phone or something like that. So that's super cool. You wouldn't need to rely on another device. You could just have data sent straight to the tablet, which is incredible. I've never heard of that before. Um, and so I showed you the dash cam. Let me quickly talk about the 360 camera. So there is four cameras, one in the front that's mounted on the grill, one on the back, obviously is the reverse cam that I connected to the power wire of my reverse light, the power signal, so that when I go into reverse, of course it pops up, which is what you want it to do. Put it back in park or go into drive. If you go into drive, um, it should put the forward cam for a few seconds. Uh, you can turn that off if you want to, but I have it on. So that is the 360 camera. Okay, so basically it is a tablet. So you have a window view of everything that you have opened. So let's go back into the 360 camera. Uh, it does have a 3D virtual view that I have not calibrated correctly. As you can see here, it is very wonky and very distorted. So um, that is probably my fault. I haven't calibrated it very well. So I will at some point recalibrate. I prefer the raw images anyway, and you can double tap to have the raw image and then the bird's eye view. This will focus. And of course, you know, it doesn't look great. So I just prefer to have the raw image anyway. Of course, you can um, not only record from the dash cam that's mounted up here, but you can record video from the 360 camera directly. So you tap on that icon. Uh, let's check out. So I have a ton of driving footage. I've had this stereo for about two weeks. Been um, slowly collecting a ton of footage. Wow, look at that. Let's check out this. Let's tap on this random one. Uh, okay, that's me stopped somewhere. Let's, uh, let's try to get some driving footage. Perfect. Okay, look. That's me driving. It's time stamped. This is the current time, and then this is the stamped time when it was captured. So pretty neat. I think what you can do with the basically four video camera feeds is import it into a um, GoPro-like software where it uh, basically takes the four camera leads and converts it into like a spherical 
like a virtualizer. So it, uh, it has like a GoPro like feel. So there's some highway footage. So that's super cool. This is the reason why I got this. And it's picture in picture, kind of drag it around. I wouldn't really do it like that. Let's make it big again. Uh, does that have audio? I don't know if that's audio. I don't think it does. It's just the straight camera footage. But this is amazing because in the event of an accident, God forbid, I have full evidence in all angles of what happened. So that's great. It's good for safety. Um, another feature that it has that I didn't do because it was gonna be too much of a pain, because let me tell you, these, the camera is right there for this mirror, if you don't focus. Um, the camera's there. So basically you drill a hole at the bottom of your mirror, run the wire through, and then into the door underneath. So it, it was a big pain to run the wiring, but it's worth it. And once I get the 3, 3D visual, visualizer um, calibrated and it looks good, then it'll be even better. So 100% worth it. I would recommend this stereo alone for just that feature. So that's super cool. Now, getting to the music because, I mean, all these doodads and fancy cameras are nice, but if it doesn't sound good, then what's the point really? And let me tell you, it does sound good. I'm using um, non-copyrighted sounds. I don't want to get copyrighted or whatever, but it does sound very, very good. Um, on top of the stereo install, I put in four new speakers in each of the doors. So um, I did a decent um, audio overhaul, some good speakers. There are kickers in the front and bulk audio in the back. And I don't even have it turned up all the way. It's about half volume. I think it goes up to 40. Of course, you have your equalizer that I've tuned to my liking. And it's a, um, it's a graphic 27 band, so you can kind of slide. See, it changes the sound. So there's a high end, low end. Get some bass drop. That's the amplifier. I'll turn that off. Reduces the impact a little bit. I'll turn the amp back on. A little distorted, but okay. Turn that down a little bit. So you have um, two surround sound settings. I don't know what exactly the difference is between them. But I know these are the frequencies. The lower it is, the more bass um, it will amplify and enhance. Speaking of bass enhancement, you have separate front and rear. So two front doors and two rear doors. So you have control for the front and the back, which is super cool. If you have a subwoofer, which I do not, um, you can independently control the frequency response to that. A really detailed sound field. I mean, you could go down to the centimeter with this thing which I don't really care for I really just have it centered with the easy mode so I don't really care for that you have high pass and low pass filters so for your front again front and rear so high pass is the higher end it goes from going from 20 Hertz to 250 Hertz so the lower pass is what I care about of course these speaker the front are rated for 30 Hertz so it's below what this filters through so it doesn't really do anything but it's cool if you do have a super badass set of speakers you can take advantage of the built-in dsp and um amplifier built-in amplifier uh it is rated for about 50 watts per speaker rms so that's pretty good for a built-in amp i can't complain with that whatsoever um so it sounds really good i can't complain about the sound one little thing I forgot is that you have quick links here. So I can go full screen nav with the touch of a button here in San Antonio. Um, and then you also have some other quick links if you hold it down. Your phone, contact favorites, music. Which um, one thing that I don't like is that the this isn't like, it doesn't show the album art, it doesn't show the cue of the songs that'll play next. It just has your basic functions and the title. So I don't really like that, and then I redial. So let me show you what I am talking about here. Let's get out of that, close that down. And then, okay, so this is your quick Bluetooth widget. Pause that. So if you tap on this, it will go to music that's saved on a flash drive that I've installed here. So basically, put a whole, whole saw, cut 
into this and then ran a flush USB mount. So I like this setup better. It, it looks better. I don't have album art here, but it would show up there. So of course this isn't copyrighted. <laughs> I just realized that. Um, but it's cool because I could, like it has more detail with this. You can see the cue, which is great. So I don't like the fact that the Bluetooth side of it is just this. Um, and then also when I start the vehicle um, or just put it in accessory on the key, it will default to the, it will default to the thumb drive music that's saved, which I would prefer Bluetooth because I stream through that most of the time. Although I do have songs on the uh, thumb drive itself. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I wish, uh, of course, with software updates, you do get over the air software updates with this app firmware over the air. So I'm hoping that they'll kind of prioritize Bluetooth audio. Um, but if that's the case, I'm just going to download some more music. Um, and by the way, this is an MP4. The most, the majority of my music is in M4A, I think, which shows up as a video. So wait, let's see. Bear with me for just a second. Is it music? Yeah, so like the majority of my music shows up as a video, which of course I used a YouTube downloader, so it's it's showing up as a video essentially. So. I wish it would just show up as MP4, because this is uh, I don't know why. See, it says MP4 there, but it won't show up in the music. So if I get out of here, it'll stop playing. Oh. Okay. There you go. So there's just little things that are, like, different about it. But, I mean, now that I'm kind of playing around with it, I've only had it for a few weeks. So I don't really know everything about it. But it's definitely super, super cool. So, um... The next thing is CarPlay. So, let's pause that. So, um, oh, and of course I have my, all my steering wheel controls. This will focus. So um, you do have to program. I'll show you that real quick. And try not to make this video super long. Okay, uh, you do have programmable controls. So basically you tell the steering wheel by holding the button down. If you hold the volume up and then select volume up on the, oh, there it is. Okay, so let's get out of this. I don't mess up my, I'm gonna have to reprogram. Oh, fuck, okay. Well, I'm gonna have to reprogram in here in a second, but look, I'll show you at the moment. So you tap on it. You want this one, right? So I will have to do this with two hands. So I basically hold the button and then hit this. And so now, essentially, I have my volume up programmed. And then you just hold the button down and then select the um, volume down. And then just do that, continue and do that for the rest of buttons so before I just erased my programming I had this obviously as the seek up and seek back um, your phone buttons and then I had this as a pause and if I held it down it has dual functions so you see here volume can't be assigned a dual function but um, for the rest of them um, for like the mode I had if I held the mode down it would um, what would it do I think it would go to my 360 setup so I could see all angles of the car as I was just holding the button so that's super cool. I'll program it later to not take up the time. But um, the next thing is CarPlay. So CarPlay is a little weird. It works, it works fine. However, it does have issues connecting. So right now it's trying to connect to wireless, or I'm sorry, wired. Okay, look, there it is. So I've had issues in the past. Um, so essentially it needs Bluetooth connection for wired CarPlay, but it also has the wired I'm sorry, wireless CarPlay, which essentially uses a Wi-Fi signal to act as the connector. So it's it's not a data connection, as in if you connect to the Wi-Fi settings, it basically says on your Wi-Fi on your phone, it'll say car link and you connect to that and then that acts as the connection, but it's not a data connection. So it basically, of course, uses the data from your phone. The CarPlay is an extension or, yeah, extension is probably a good word to use of your phone. 
So of course I have my 5G signal and um, you can use Siri, hands-free. I don't want to say it too fast or she might come up. And I think that would uh, end my video. So I don't want to do that. Um, but of course you do have hands-free S voice assistant control. Um, and then you have, you know, basically all your other navigation and music apps is the main one. Zoom, I actually don't even know what the... Okay, oops, uh, I totally just activated Siri. So if you <laughs> activate Siri, your video stops. And of course that will do it with the um, Zoom, which I didn't know, I haven't really used that. But, um, you know, you got basically the rest of your app access. So this is cool. Um, I have it wired currently. So I think if I remove the plug, let's try it. Oh, I should go away. Not, okay, I guess not. Well, whatever. So um, it does have, the point is, it does have some connection issues where it um, takes like upwards of 20 to 30 seconds to connect sometimes. Where in friends and family members that I've been in their cars where they have CarPlay, um, even on aftermarket stereo, like a Kenwood Pioneer, JVC, whatever, um, most of them have wired CarPlay by default and sometimes wireless. But for wired CarPlay, you just simply plug it in and then like immediately within a couple seconds, it's, it's it, you know, has the wired connection. So it's not the biggest deal in the world. I still obviously have it up even as I'm recording, um, but it, it's a little laggy. So it's fine. I mean, it gets the job done. I definitely can't really complain too much. And then I have my access back where I can just tap this home button here. So, super cool. Um, I have the radio, which I'm... Each, when you get two or more lines, you can save hundreds on your mobile bill. Plus, there are no... Okay, I forgot. Okay, so, um, yeah, you have your radio. Uh, the last thing that I probably want to talk about is the access to the internet. So, I'm going to connect to my hotspot real quick, and I'll show you how that works. Okay, so now I have my hotspot connected. And of course, we'll stop the radio. Okay, so, um... Let's see, I don't remember if I have these logged in or not, but the point is that you can stream movies, TV shows, YouTube. So it's really incredible that you could do that on a tablet. Of course, I have to say it's not safe to be driving around and to be watching things, but I mean, you could do it if you wanted to. So that is incredible. This is like the cherry on top of you know, I got this for the camera setup, but I mean, it's incredible that I could, let's put this on. It is incredible that you can stream straight from the tablet. Let's try to get it to work. Of course, my hotspot is not the fastest connection, but it should be able to work. Come on. Oh, it does work. So I'm not sure why it's being annoying. Let's try Netflix. Okay, so check it out, Netflix. Let's put, I'll try not to look too much. And of course this is a um, APK. So it's not, the Netflix actually wasn't in the app store. So I'm not exactly sure why, but this is an APK. So it's a file that I download from website and then you can install into the tablet. So let's just pick one, play. <sighs> okay, so it's taking a little longer than I wanted to. But it does stand that I can stream things straight to the tablet. Let's see if it plays. Come on, come on. My phone is getting really hot. It's having to record this video and freaking stream something. So, okay, it may not pull up. I have, I've watched things on here before. Okay, and finally here it is. So. It doesn't have picture in picture support, but that's fine. I don't need it to. Um, so very, very incredible stereo. Uh, I honestly really have no complaints at all. There are little tidbit things, but I would not say that they're deal breakers at all. Um, let's go back. So um, the first being the CarPlay wired issue. I don't know if I had it connected. I can't really check while I'm recording. Um, This isn't, this doesn't go in picture in picture, but it does have background play because I have YouTube premium. So 
It has many picture in picture within the app, but so I mean, hey, that's good enough. That is impressive. I don't know of many other stereos that could say that they could stream things video mainly to the interface itself. So pretty great. So just to continue what I was saying, um, the CarPlay thing is kind of annoying. It just takes a while to connect. It's a quick, just showing you background the weather. Um, it is in Celsius. I don't know how to change that. I'll probably dig around the settings. The other thing is a issue sometimes with the Bluetooth. So one out of every 10 times I get in here, I would say there is a little bit of static and lag in the Bluetooth audio. Uh, it goes away. It's not, it doesn't like last for very long, but occasionally when I get in here, it will static and lag, which is kind of annoying. Of course, it doesn't happen every time. And with CarPlay, I really don't get that issue. So um, not sure what's going on there. Houston International Airport. So I think you can get, um, you can get Hey Google support where it um, will come up automatically. So you could use that as the default, as the default um, voice assistant. Uh, I have not figured out how to do that though. Ooh, that's a little choppy. Carlink is definitely a lot smoother and quicker than this. I actually haven't used the built-in navigation, but hey, there it is. So you could do that if you want to. Um, and hey, look at that. Something that, one thing that CarPlay doesn't have is the traffic reports, similar to Waze, which of course Google owns Waze. So anyway, I am definitely um, carrying on to a little too long. One thing I do want to mention that's a continued issue. This is an OBD2 port, which is basically a, a reader that plugs into the bottom of the a dash or the footwell and then you can come in here and what it's supposed to do is read the codes and give you vehicle information so it gives me some things like the the battery voltage is there it's supposed to give you your speed you know your dash you know your odometer functions and then the main thing where i've really got it was it gives you the codes gives you trouble codes for your engine so that you know, if you have a cylinder misfire or something happens inside the engine, it'll be able to read the OBD and tell you here. The problem is um, there's a way that you have, so you basically download this app from this, this app. So you download it and then you go to the other one and then you connect it to Bluetooth. Although I cannot for the life of me get it to connect. And of course, look, I have it here. So I'm in contact with the customer support. His name is Dan. Um, the customer support is based out of Australia and he's pretty good, although it does take um, about two days to get a response. So, um, you know, you definitely deal with the time difference there. And speaking of time, um, this stereo took a month to get here. I bought it on February 13th, like the Super Bowl, day of the Super Bowl here in the States. Um, it got here mm, like a few days like March 8th or 9th or something like that. So it took basically about a month to get here, which is fine. That's to be expected because this ships directly from China. And so on top of that, you pay, I paid about 150 in shipping because you, you do ship it across the freaking world. So um, it's not too bad though, because you're, see someone coming in, my neighbor. Um, you know, you do get a lot for the money. I think this 360 specific model with the enhanced hardware and motherboard and everything to accommodate the 360 camera was about 450 or so. And the regular other ones are like three or so hundred. So um, this one has six gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. And of course I have 128 gig flash drive. So I expanded that to 256. And then the dash cam has a SD card. I don't know if you can see that. There's an SD card right here. And then that acts as the storage for the separate dash cam. So that's separate from the 360 cam. So it's a little confusing. I got both thinking that the dash cam was going to be the one to re record and not knowing that the 360 cam is capable of recording two. So I have two methods of recording that, that are on constantly and save to the flash drive there. So pretty incredible. I would 100% recommend the stereo. Buy it, buy it, buy it. Of course, do keep in mind the shipping times are long and the shipping itself is expensive, but it's worth it for the price because the Kenwood DMX 1057R that I wanted, that's also a 10 inch screen, can't do nearly as much. Um, 
This is the only aftermarket stereo that I've ever heard of that has support for a 360 camera. So that's incredible. Again, the reason I bought it. So the Kenwood that I wanted did have four camera inputs, but they weren't, they could not do the virtual view, which I mean, again, this is, I need to fix it, but they didn't even have support for this. So there's no software that was enabling that on the Kenwood JVC side. So the pros far outweigh the cons in terms of software, sound quality, um, overall performance, it's super fast, doesn't really lag too much. Um, so definitely get it, definitely. I know this video dragged on a little bit longer than I wanted to, wanted to but I just wanted to um, you know, show you the facets of the stereo that I use. So thank you for watching if you stuck around this long. Um, have a nice day from San Antonio, Texas. So one additional little thing I wanted to mention real quick is that it has a built-in capacitor so that if you recently have been in the car, it should pop up and have an instant um, boot time. Although I've had problems, not, I wouldn't call it a problem. It's just a, it, I was told by other videos online that um, it, within two days, so if you've been in your car within the last two days, it has that instant boot time where it doesn't need to do a full 20, 20 second boot. Um, so I have not experienced that even though it does have the capacitor built in. If I get in here within about five minutes or so, it does have the hot boot. But it, like, if it's past that five minute period, then it has to manually boot all over again. Not, again, not a big deal, but other stereos have been faster in my experience. But I'm definitely not gonna replace this one, so just to let you guys know that.